Hello, welcome back on my YouTube channel. In this video I'm going to demonstrate how to interpolate groundwater quality data from boreholes. We're going to use a data set from the Orange Sinku River Basin GIS server, which is a GeoNode spatial data infrastructure. And we're going to look at three different interpolation methods. First, the Thiessen polygon method, second, inverse distance weighting, and third, Krieging. We'll first search for the StumpRead dataset. When we search the catalog for StumpRead, we'll end up with this result. And we are going to use here the borehole database in the StumpRead transboundary aquifer, yield and water quality. If you click on the title, you can read the metadata. There we can see that it has a lot of boreholes. And uh, we can also see the metadata here. If we click on the attributes, we can see which uh, water quality parameters are in this data set. And we see it has uh, nitrate in milligrams per liter. In QGIS, we can easily connect to a GeoNode spatial data infrastructure. We go to the data source manager, choose GeoNode, and we create a new connection. Give it a name. Here I use Oracicon, the name of the system. And I paste the URL of the GeoNode, and when I click Test Connection, it will say that the connection is successful. Then I can go back and click Connect to see all the layers in the spatial data infrastructure. So I'm going to filter on the search term uh, StumpRead that we used before to find that layer. And I'm interested in the WFS web service because that will give us the vector layer. So I'm going to use this uh, Stas Borholes WFS layer. And when I click Add, it will be added to our map canvas. So it's good to uh, check if the points are in the correct location. So I'm adding the OpenStreetMap XYZ layer from the browser panel. And there I can see that this makes uh, sense. So let's export all these features to a geo package. So we have it in a local uh, file. And I call this uh, Stumpree Data. So that's the name of our geo package. And I change the layer name here to uh, Boreholes. And I can change here the projection to the one of this uh, area that we're going to use. And uh, this is UTM Zone 34 South. So let's uh, search for that. Select the coordinate reference system and click OK. In this interface you can also select specific uh, fields to export, but here we export all. Click OK and the data will be downloaded into our geo package. Let's remove the online layer. If you hover your mouse over the layers you can find uh, where it's located and uh, the projection. Let's also save our project to the geo package. Choose here the geo package and I give the project a name. Let's call it Stumpreet. And also the projection of our project needs to be changed. Before we can interpolate the data, we need to look at the attribute table to see if there are no data values. Let's move to the field with nitrate and there we see that no data is indicated with minus 9999.99. So we are going to only look at positive values larger or equal to zero. So I make this selection. You see that the yellow dots are the selected boreholes. And we are going to export the selected features to a new layer in our geo package. This way we also keep a copy with all the boreholes so we can repeat this exercise for other uh, water quality parameters. You could select here the specific fields that you want to use in this layer, but here I'm selecting all the fields, but then only for the selected boreholes. Click OK, and now we have our nitrate uh, borehole layer. I hide uh, the other one. And uh, this will be the basis of the interpolation. Let's start with the Thiessen interpolation. Go to the raster menu and choose analysis grid nearest neighbor. There, for no data, use minus 9999. 
otherwise it will use zero, but zero can also be values of nitrate. Expand the advanced parameter section and choose there the nitrate field to interpolate to use as a Z value. In the additional command line parameters, you can specify the extent and pixel size of the result. This is covered in another video. Output data type we keep at float32 because that fits our continuous values. Choose as an output file name nitrate tison. Note that we cannot add it directly to our geo package. This is the result. Let's change the styling. Use single band pseudo color because it's a continuous raster. And choose a ramp that makes sense. Because the values are quite extreme, we can use a mean standard deviation or cumulative count. And I change it to red, so the more red, the more nitrate. Let's repeat this for the inverse distance weighing interpolation. In the raster menu under analysis, you can find their grid inverse distance to a power. There you can choose the nitrate point layer. You can keep the default settings, which uses an uh, exponential function for the weights. Change the no data there to minus 9999. And we use the Z field nitrate. So this is one way that you can uh, do the interpolation, very similar to TSEN. But if you want to have control in an easy way on the output, pixel size and extent, I can recommend to use the same tool from the processing toolbox, which I will demonstrate here. So I go to IDW interpolation from the processing toolbox and the dialog is slightly different. I choose the nitrate layer. I choose the nitrate attribute to interpolate I click the plus sign to add it to the interpolation uh, points. I keep the distance coefficient also an exponential. For the extent, I choose the extent of our nitrate borehole dataset. And I can choose here pixel size. And I will use here a pixels of uh, five kilometers. It's quite a large area. And to uh, make it fast in this demonstration, I use five kilometer pixels. And then I save the result, call it nitrate IDW, and then I run it. And I can copy the styles from the TSEN to IDW in order to better compare them. But here you see the difference. The third interpolation method that I'm going to demonstrate is creaking. For that purpose, we need to install the Smart Map plugin. The Smart Map plugin has some uh, dependencies, uh, so it's very important to go to the home page. Many of these plugins have a home page with installation instructions. And here you see the instructions for installing Smart Map. And it gives you the uh, dependencies. So you can either follow the instructions here to add the dependencies or use another video on my YouTube channel to use the OSGO for W installer to add missing packages. After successful installation, you will find this uh, icon here in the toolbar. When you click it, you get into the smart web dialog. There indicate the data set that you want to use, our nitrate data set, and choose the nitrate field. Click import and it will show a preview of the data. Keep the defaults here and go to the grid tab. There we can indicate the pixel size of the output raster. So I'm using here again five kilometers to make it the same as our IDW interpolation result. And here in the graph you see all our uh, uh, points and in the color scale it indicates its values and then i go to the interpolation tab and when i click calculate it uh, constructs the semi variogram and the color scale indicates how many uh, points are taken into account at the lag distance so i'm going to change here some of the parameters the maximum distance i put it to 50 kilometers and i use a lag 5 kilometers, you have to play with these values to get good results. 
and you can change the model that you want to fit and uh, keep an eye on the R square and R messy values. And here I use a spherical model and it indicates basically that the uh, spatial autocorrelation in the data set is uh, around uh, 10 kilometers and beyond that there's no spatial correlation. So I'm going to use these settings to interpolate the borehole data set for nitrate. So I click interpolate and then it gives a preview of the result with the picture and it also loads the layer into the map canvas. You can close the dialog and move the layer to the top and in order to compare it with the other layers I'm going to copy the style. So now I can compare and you see that this uh, result is uh, a bit different and it's up to you as an expert to decide what is the best result. And uh, that depends on the point uh, density of which uh, interpolation technique is uh, most appropriate and other assumptions of your data. Now I'm going to plot the point data on top of it with nitrate using graduated colors. And I'm going to use the same uh, ramp, which is red, yellow, green. I click classify. Uh, the boundaries of the classes are different than the rasters, but uh, it gives us a bit of an impression where the high and low nitrate values are in our original borehole data set. So you can use that to uh, interpret the interpolation results. Let's invert uh, the ramps because then uh, high nitrate will be uh, red, uh, which is more intuitive. And then I can uh, compare again the layers and the points. So here we have assumed that all the boreholes are from the same aquifer, but in fact it's an aquifer system and the attribute table indicates the aquifers. So I'm duplicating the layer and I'm going to rename this one to aquifers. And I'm going to uh, style them with a categorized renderer. So we can see from uh, to which aquifer each borehole belongs. I use the aquifer attribute. But here we don't need a color ramp, but uh, random colors. And there each uh, color represents to which aquifer the point belongs. And this uh, can also be used in the further interpretation of the result. The last thing that you can do is to create uh, contour lines to visualize the uh, gradients in nitrate here in the groundwater. So I'm creating a duplicate layer here because I'm going to use the contour renderer for the raster. And I'm demonstrating this for the IDW result. So I rename it to uh, nitrate IDW contours. Make sure it's switched on and the active layer in the layer styling panel. And I choose their contours. And by default it uses a contour interval of 100, but here we have uh, uh, smaller uh, differences so I change it uh, to uh, 10 and here we see the result and you can also indicate an uh, index contour interval so I could set it to uh, 100 so the normal contour lines make them a bit gray and the index contour is, uh, is then black I can still play a bit with uh, the values so 100 seems to be too big but with 50 I see uh, some index contours Another thing that you can play with is the input downscaling, which controls the generalization of the line, so it makes it smoother, and this gives a much nicer result. But if we want to add labels, we need to really calculate the contour lines, so I'm going to do that here. Choose uh, the original nitrate uh, layer, which is of course the same as the duplicate, as the input layer. Choose the interval of uh, 10 meters, which is the same for the other visualization. I choose Z as an attribute name, so that will be the attribute in the attribute table with the elevation values of the contours. And I save it to a geo package. Note that I cannot add this layer to an existing geo package, so I'm creating a new one here. And this is then the result, which is very comparable to our rendered result, but now it has an attribute table and I can. Uh, style it and add labels uh, as if it's a normal uh, vector layer. So I'm going to make the line uh, gray. I use the same uh, gray as we used uh, in the previous rendered contours. 
Uh, if you want to use uh, different styling for the index contours, have a look at my previous video on my YouTube channel that gives a bit more details on the contours. I choose the Z value for the labels. And I remove the rendered contours. Change the placement settings to curved and on the line. And to make it more readable, I also use a text buffer, which I make a bit uh, more subtle. And uh, in this way, you have your contour lines, and we can uh, create them also for the other interpolation results and uh, compare them. I hope this video was uh, useful. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel to receive updates, and see you next time. <music>